Willie is in charge of this kitchen here. Hey, Willie, man, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Here's the kitchen, Johnny. Just leave it the way you found it. You bet, sir. I All appreciate right. you letting me borrow it. I won't mess it up. All right. Bye-bye, Willie. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cooking with Johnny. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Johnny. We're here at Third and Lindsley in Nashville, Tennessee, where I have a show, a country show that I'm going to be doing later on. But right now, what I want to do is cook for some of the crew. Uh, on the menu today, Texas boy, got to have another Texican dish. We're going to do a, a chicken verde with a, uh, a street vendor style Mexican corn and a stuffed poblano pepper with a white cheese. Well, come over here. I've already st started some stuff softening. What I have here is some poblano pepper, a tomatillo, tomatillo, some garlic, and last but not least, some onion. A little bit of uh, olive oil on the bottom of this pan. And we're just gonna saute, oh, if you could smell this. We're just gonna saute this until it's soft. It's gonna be part of our sauce. Let me show you how I prep these veggies. Already got these done for our side dish, but this is a poblano pepper. It's not as hot as you might think. Go ahead and cut the top off. Save that for other goods. Make sure you get all of the stem, the, the, um, the ribs, and the seeds out of there. We're gonna be using these for two dishes. It's gonna go in my sauce. We're also gonna do a poblano stuffed white cheese, which you're gonna love. This is a tomatillo, which you find in the market. It's basically a little miniature tomato. It comes with the husk. If it doesn't have the husk intact, don't buy it. You peel the husk as, is, as I'm doing here. It's really easy. You can see it just looks like a little, like a little green tomato. Throw so a little stronger. You could use a green tomato if you wanted to, but why would you want to do that? It's just a tomatillo dish. Cut it in half, core it like an apple. I'm sure most of you know how to uh, prep an avocado, but I'm gonna show you anyway. Cut it in half, what I like to do. Pit it. See, I don't see a spoon. Yeah, I do. Spoon. I go ahead and scoop it. People do it different ways. This is not to be pretty. It's gonna go in a food processor anyway. I like to hit it. I like to hit it with a little bit of lime so it does, the color doesn't go bad on me. So I just, just hit it, just hit it with a little lime. If you look here, you can see we're nice and blistered. Stuff is good and soft. Hell yeah. We're gonna put it in a food processor. Just like this. We're gonna add avocado. I'm gonna go ahead and throw about that much cilantro in there. Cilantro mixes all good dishes with mine, especially Mexican dishes. If you don't have a food processor, a blender works fine. No big deal. Oh, we're just gonna pulse this. I like to hit it with more lime. Just right down in there like that. Squeeze the sucker. Just like that. Let's pop this back on. Let's get this good and blended. I don't want it smooth. I want it kind of lumpy. Not too lumpy. What I like to do too, just to make it a little creamier, just a little half and half. This is all about the eyeball. So we're gonna add a little half and half. You can see it. You can see it getting creamy in there. The smell this thing's putting off. I wish you had smell-o-vision. A little more. That's gonna do it for our sauce. That's gonna go on top of our chicken. Speaking of our chicken, it's time to get to it. I've already pounded out a couple chicken cutlets here, as you can see, but I'm gonna pound one out just so you can see what, what to do. But basically, you get a nice white piece of chicken breast and you beat the crap out of it. I, I like to use my fist or maybe a nice flat pan. This is the best part of this meal. So we're gonna take some taco seasoning. This is, uh, this is everyday taco seasoning, cumin, red pepper. We're just gonna dust it. Just gonna dust it, both sides. Now we're gonna lightly dust it with some all-purpose flour, which I have right here if I can just figure out how to open. There we go. 
You don't need to put it in the bag and shake it. None of that bull. Simply lightly cover. Don't worry about if you get too much. You want something on there, you want it nice golden brown. You could make this dish with tilapia like my friend Lisa does. Be much healthier. You could also grill your chicken. We're going to use the olive oil. And we're going to just fry it for about five minutes a side in a shallow pan. I'm actually going to use the same pan I softened up the jalapeno, poblano, tomatillo, and the onion. You see that? Shake off the excess. That's what it's going to look like. A pounded beet chicken cutlet, Mexican seasoning, lightly floured. It's time to fry these puppies up. Let's get to our Mexican corn. This is a, this is a variation of a, well, what I did is made it so you can do it in the kitchen. Like I said, um, play in Mexico, we used to go out and hit the street vendors. They have all kinds of great stuff. They have tamales. They have enchiladas and bananas. I love the Mexican corn. It's made with corn. They use um, mayonnaise. They use butter. They use red pepper flake. And they fry it up. What we're going to do, we're going to take this pan right here. We're going to dump two cans, two 15 and a half cans of whole kernel corn drained right in there like that. Bring this corn to a boil. What we do now, we're going to add about two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Oh, butter. Spin in this hot kitchen so it's softened up quite a bit. One of the key ingredients to this Mexican corn is red pepper flake. It's not too, it's just like this stuff you put on pizza. It gives it a nice color and flavor. And that's what they do at the street vendors do. But when this is done, we're ready to plate it up. I'm gonna put some grated white cheese on it. Acidero cheese works really well, fresco. If you can't find those in your market, hey man, just use Monterey Jack. Any kind of white cheese will do. You see how um, when you pound that chicken out like I did, how um, you're going to get more flavor because the crust is going to cover more of the chicken. I don't mind grilling the chicken, especially when the summer ones come, and using the same sauce that we're going to spoon up on this. But you got to admit, that looks pretty gosh darn good the way it is. Safety first. This is a cool little device here. It's a torch. Mostly they use it for creme brulee, but I'm gonna use it to uh, blacken up my poblano pepper. Check it out. Oh, oh, control the flame here. Some people, if you have gas cooking, can just do it right on the stove on an open flame. You can also, of course, boil it. Uh, I guess the main thing is just to get it blackened and softened. This is just a fun way to do it, ah, ah. You know, it's funny. I grew up an only child. I am an only child. Both of my parents worked. So after school, I was basically what they call a latchkey kid. So basically, my grandmother and my mother taught me to cook at a young age because if I didn't know how to cook, it was peanut butter and jelly all the time. And while I like peanut butter and jelly, I enjoy I think I made my first chicken tetrazzini when I was 12 years old. All right, that is how you blacken a poblano pepper with a blowtorch. Be back in a minute. The great thing about this meal, it could easily feed a family of four, maybe five. All this was under $30. I'll have the grocery receipt I'll show you. Not bad to feed four a gourmet meal like this for under $30. Mm. What I'm doing now is prepping a pan for my poblano peppers. I'm going to want to blister the rest of them. I did one with a torch. You can also do it this way, just on the stove top. Again, you just want to cook them until they're soft. Check them out. I'm just going to grab them. I'm going to throw them in this pan here with hot oil. And we're going to fry them up until they're soft, until they're blistered. Once they're blistered, just for a little while, you throw them into a paper sack. This helps steam them so that you can peel some of the black off if you don't want it all. Take a look at my sauce here. See, it has the consistency of guacamole. Oh, but remember, there's a whole poblano pepper in here and one whole jalapeno about that size. Don't forget the cream. 
half and half, two or three garlic cloves, and gosh, there was about, I want to say four ripe, make sure they're ripe, four ripe avocado. You see how that's blackening up nicely? It's just looking perfect. This is exactly what you want it to look like. Don't burn yourself, do a little shake, give it a little shake, give it a little shake, shake, shake. I'm gonna let this cool off in the paper sack like I showed you. We're gonna stuff it with cheese, finish it off, and then we're gonna plate this stuff up and eat it. Close up your paper bag to get that steam working on those peppers. This is the white cheese we're gonna use. In Texas, I can find Asadero, or um, Fresco. Um, I couldn't find it. Always in a pinch, Monterey Jack. It's a nice white cheese that melts easy, evenly and nicely. That's what we'll use for our peppers. See, uh, when you get the Mexican corn, the street vendor, it's always a little blackened because they grill it with flame. So there's no reason that you can't just slightly blacken your corn in the pan. And while it's hot, still hot, come over here. Add a little more cilantro for flavor, also for color. And grated, this is grated. Monterey Jack cheese. This is the stuff here, man. This is the stuff. This is what we're talking. This is pure perfection. You can see how softened they are. Like I said, if you want to, you can peel this off. I'll peel one off for you just to show you. This peels really easy, especially if it's cooked right. You take the Monterey Jack, you stuff it into the poblano pepper. You fasten it with a wooden toothpick. One, two. Now you can go ahead and flour these up and fry them. I'm not going to do that. We've got plenty of, uh, plenty of flour going already. This is also a great appetizer. I'm going to use it as a side dish. You can do either way. You can wow your friends with this. You can help that along by covering it. We're ready to plate this up. See how the cheese melted nicely inside there? We're going to take nice chicken breast. This is the one I pounded out for you guys. It's got a nice colorful plate. This is our mixture that we made. Get it on there where it looks really nice. You can see it cover the whole chicken cutlet. Mexican corn, we'll plate it up. Hit it with a little more red pepper. A bit of cilantro. And then, just to finish it all off, a nice lime. Right like that. My chicken verde, spicy Mexican dish, stuffed poblano with white cheese, street vendor style corn. Man, it's gonna be a great dinner. Up next, Mountain Dew Margarita. Don't miss it, gonna be good. We'll see you guys later. Aye! Hey, we're still here at 3rd and Lindsley and they've been nice enough to turn the bar over to me. I'm gonna make something that you probably have never had before. Uh, growing up in the Deep South, you drink a lot of Mountain Dew. So what I'm gonna make for you today is show you how to make a Mountain Dew margarita to go along with our chicken verde, our stuffed peppers, our Mexican corn. All right then, we've got this pre-measured up here. We've got four ounces of our triple sec right in the blender, right on. Full, full blender full of ice, four ounces tequila. Oh boy, I have to do a shot of that in a minute. Three ounces apple schnapps. Good Lord. And an ounce of shine. This is actually white whiskey, popcorn Sutton style. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get a little slushy before we add our Mountain Dew. Just slightly slushy. Now what we're gonna have to do is add more ice and then we're gonna put our Mountain Dew in. Now that we've got the liquor blended up, what we'll do now is add our super special ingredient, nectar of the south, Mountain Dew. You can use diet if you want, but I'm not on a diet. 
You need about 12 ounces. About like that. Then you're going to blend it up again. Get it nice and slushy. If you want, if you want some salt, just go ahead and take the juice of the lime, go around your rim, salt up your glass. See how nice that is? Yeah. Oh, it's perfectly slushy. If you could see this, if you could see this here, look. Perfectly slushy, just like a nice, a nice slushy. Perfect margarita. Ooh, I smell the citrus in the Mountain Dew. Oh, mercy. As I said before, this is not for the faint of heart. There's a lot of booze in this, so be careful. Ooh, now, if your straw sits up like that, you've done a good job. And if, it, if it's still too slushy, add more ice and re-blend. All right, guys? So this is our Mountain Dew Margarita going with our chicken today. It's been a pleasure here at 3rd and Lindsley here in Nashville, Tennessee, cooking, drinking, and we're going to play some music in a little while, too. It's a triple threat. Oh, let's see how this is. Mercy, mercy. Woo, that's good stuff. We'll see you next time on Cooking with Johnny. I'm Johnny Solinger. See you in the kitchen and in the bars and in the arenas. Rock and roll, guys. Yeah.